So Ben Shapiro, I shouldn't have to tell you who he is. I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably know who Ben Shapiro is. But um, and with the whole Israel Hamas conflict right now, Ben Shapiro is loud and and at it, right? And he's very proud. He's very proud uh, uh, Israeli. So he's actually, um, I think he's he's he has family over there. So I mean, obviously he's he's going to be like, you know, he's going to have a lot of personal feelings about something like this. But let's. Uh, I'm going to read this article, or sorry, I'm not going to read this article. I'm going to uh, play this uh, video by Ben, where he goes into a little bit. This was on his most recent show, and uh, I've kind of pulled a little excerpt from it. This is on uh, X right now, and uh, I'll, I'll just stop it at some point. Over the weekend, my people, the Jewish people, were attacked, and murdered, mutilated, our women were raped, our children were kidnapped. This has happened millions of times before to millions of Jews across history. Jew hatred exists because evil exists, because there are people who have, for literally all of human history, hated the Jews and sought to strike at them while they are weak, who have blamed the Jews for their own problems, who have crafted complex conspiracy theories about the supposed power of the Jews, who have sought to destroy, to murder, to mutilate, to rape the Jews, from Pharaoh to Haman, from Hitler to Hamas. The words of the Nazis are indistinguishable from the words of the Hamas charter. The chain of Jew hatred is unbroken, For two millennia, since the destruction of the last Jewish dynasty in the Holy Land of Israel, those Jew haters were ascendant. Well, no longer. That is the promise of the state of Israel. Never again. The Jews will not stand by. They will not be murdered. They will not leave their biblical homeland. They will not surrender. They will be strong and courageous. Chazak v'amatz, as Joshua said 3,000 years ago. Israel is indispensable. This weekend proved it is indispensable. Okay. So, as you can see, if you ever watch Ben Shapiro, he's not typically that charged. You can just see in his eyes how charged he is there. I don't, I don't, you know, obviously, how are you, how could you, how could you not see his point of view on that? Can you imagine, just imagine if someone were attacking your homeland, you know, like he's, I, he was born, I think he was born in, in the US, but his parents came over and but just somewhere where you have family, where you have roots, where you have ties, heritage, all that kind of thing. And he's religious. So he's, you know, the idea that that uh, Israel, Jerusalem is, is all tied into the Bible, is the Holy Land and all that, all that jazz, whether you believe it or not. If you do believe that kind of thing, you can, you can see from his point of view, if you know, like, you know, just looking in, why he would be so, you know, charged about it. I love Ben Shapiro. I think he's got a great point of view. I don't always agree with his point of view. I think he takes a very staunch conservative approach to things that I I see nuance in and I can see the other side on. Um, But for the most part, I think he's very sensible and I think he's intelligent as heck. Um, So yeah, but I, you know, in this case here, I, I think, you know, because he's trying to, he he has a news sort of organization, if you will, the Daily Wire. The idea to, to try and take the emotion out of it and be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more neutral on it would be better. But I mean, again, how how do you do that for a guy like him? Uh, you know, let me see, what are you saying here, Gizzo? The J Post comment section is indistinguishable from the Third Reich rhetoric. Rhetoric he's projecting. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, so what do you think then? What is, what is, I don't know. I don't know what, what, uh, approach I would take if I were him exactly, because I'd be mad as hell. I think I'd just have to stay away from it. Um, because I would be, it would be too for me. Right. Um, but you, when you're, when you're a, when you're as big of a personality, a broadcasting personality, as someone like Ben Shapiro, you can very easily charge up people. And I understand that there is the idea that you want to charge people, but Israel can defend themselves against Hamas. Let's be clear. They can defend themselves. It's more about what we, what everyone else is going to look in and say, was that too much or was that too little or, you know, 
it's this whole idea of like turning the cheek. You, you know, people will say, I read, read an article where I forget who was it was someone, I think it was Tony Blinken was saying uh, that they need to be careful about the, the retaliation and such. I'll tell you what, <laughs> tell you what, somebody attacked somebody I cared about. I'm, you better be fucking sure I'm going to retaliate. It's now. You better hope that I have time to sort of calm down a little because my retaliation would be would be pretty bad at the height of emotion. So, you know, it's it's like again, like I said, it's it is incumbent on the the stronger of the two to to show some restraint because if they just went in there and just friggin', you know, let's use a World War Three World War Two uh, um, term, if we're going there and blitzkrieg the crap out of the Gaza Strip. They could end this, this thing in a week, but you know, there's, it's, they're going to be no better. So yeah. Um, what do you got here? Uh, take the wall down is what I think. Palestinians and Israelis, Israelis claim the same land. Why not share? Yeah. I, that would, that sounds nice, man. It does sound nice. And I, I don't know, but I don't know if it would work necessarily. It's, I think you could kind of, I think you could test that. I think, I think if there were some concessions and now, I'm not good with the history of this part of the region, but they were there were times where they did try to actually um, where uh, Israel offered more land, and I I guess it was turned down a number of times. Now, I would I would think that maybe if they did something where they could they could do something like that on a test and say, look, we're gonna we're we're gonna open this part, but it would have to. I mean, I don't know how you do that. Because you'd have to, the, Isra the Israelis living in those areas would have to say, yeah, well, we're open to that. And because there's so much history, it's like, how do you, how do you start this? How do you fix this thing where it is, where it is now? Like, that's the problem. You, you have so much history, you have so much animosity and all this, that how do you just put a stop to that and say, okay, let's reset and let's start from this, from day one here. You know, shots fired, whatever, all that. But okay, enough. Let's see if we can do something from here. It always seems to be retaliatory over there. You did this, we're doing that. You did this, we're doing that. It's but that's that's the world. I mean, that's the world we live in. You know, you know September uh, 2001 was no different, right? It was oh, we got attacked. We're going over there. We're attacking everybody. You know, and people like that. People rah rah behind that kind of thing. But it's hard to stop conflict when you take that approach, right? So, but I, I do agree with the spirit of what you're saying, Gizzo. It's, uh, it's just, I don't know who, who's the first one to turn the cheek, I guess, if you will.